Hi team, welcome to my session on Coffee with Prab. And today we're going to discuss about IPsec. It is basically part of my network security interview series. So I was thinking about picking one topic of network security and discuss about the topic for 15 to 20 minutes. My name is Prab Nair and for more information, you can check my LinkedIn profile. And uh, if you're new to my channel, do subscribe to my YouTube channel and click on the bell icon to make sure you should not miss my future videos on a similar topic. So without wasting a time, let's start with the first part. Thank you. So let's understand what is IPsec. So if you go by the definition, it's a IP security or IPsec is a collection of protocols designed by the IETF to provide security for a packet at the network level. It is actually a solution which is introduced to protect the data in transit. Okay, so we have a three states of data. One is basically called data at rest. One is basically called data in transit and data in use. So example, if data resides somewhere in a storage, we need to protect. We have a solution for that. But when one system A sending a data to B over the network, okay, so there is a possibility that a hacker can able to intercept the data. So I want to protect the data from, you know, I want to prevent the data from getting intercepted. So one of the protocol suit we are using is IP security protocol suit. Now, Overall, as I said, it is used to ensure the confidentiality, integrity and authenticity of the data transmit over a different type of network. Okay, so example like we have a system A and we have a system B. So we have a data here. So what we did is data is basically protect with the key. So we have encrypt the data. So data will remain encrypted throughout the journey and it reach B and B will basically use the same key to decrypt the data. So by this way, it offer the confidentiality. It also offer integrity authenticity. How we'll discuss in a later stage. Before we're going to discuss about IPsec in detail, let me tell you the IPsec family. In IPsec, we basically have a three important component. One is basically called as a protocol. One is basically called as a modes. And one is basically called as a key exchange. So when you're talking about the protocol, protocol we have a three type. One is called two types, sorry, AH and ESP. When you're talking about modes, we have a two modes in IPsec. One is called as a transport mode. And one is basically called as a tunnel mode. And the key exchange is basically achieved through ISA, KMP, Oakley, and SEA, SME. So these are the some of the parameters we have. For data encryption, it basically use AES. And for the key exchange, it used Diffie-Hellman. Along with that, for the hashing, is basically used the SHA. So this is basically the primary goal of IPsec or primary component of IPsec. So ultimate goal, whatever the data we are sending over the network, it should be protect from unauthorized disclosure, unauthorized modification, and giving an assurance that it is coming from the right source. So the first thing we're going to discuss in the IPsec is the protocols. So the first protocol that we're going to discuss in IPsec is AH. So AH is designed to authenticate the source host and ensure the integrity of the payload carried in the IP packet. How? Example like we have a system A and we have a system B. Okay, so this is basically my data. So if you see the statement here, it is clearly mentioned. The protocol use a hash function. So what we used to do is we create a hash value of the data. We generate the hash value hash value is represent the integrity state of data so example right now the time is basically 638 so at 638 the data was formed and this is the hash value of the current state of data is it clear and then this hash is basically encrypted by the symmetric key and we append the ah header as a signature into the data and when we send this data to b when b receive the data they will see the ah header so first AH header will be decrypted by the secret key. Then they get the hash. So that is an assurance that this is come from the A because B already have that same session key which A has. So that give the assurance it came from the A. Now we have to check the hash value. By check, we checking the integrity state. So we scan the data and check for the hash and compare this hash with this hash. So if it's same, it means it gives also the assurance data came without any unauthorized modification. So that is why I call protocol use a hash function and symmetric key to create a message digest which is called hash and insert into the authentication header 
that is why ah primary offer authentication and data integrity but not a privacy because anyone can able to read the data is it clear because when we even a sending a data to b okay so example someone is sending a data okay so attacker is here he can basically intercept the data and easily for the user to read the data it doesn't matter for them what is ah is it clear but if we modify the data and resend b can able to identify this is not the same data which came from a because it is encrypted by the unique keys so ah primarily offer the authenticity and integrity of the data state but if you looking for the complete solution end to end solution then we have a esp which basically provide the source authentication integrity and confidentiality so example like we have a system a we have a system b this is basically my source this is my destination so far what we have learned is we have a data to give an assurance it is coming from a and with the integrity state we add the ah header but then what happen is they basically encrypt the entire data into new packet and then it basically sending that encrypted data over the network now if there is a attacker if he monitor and he capture this they cannot able to read anything on that so it already having a authentication header which providing the authenticity which capture your integrity hash value which provide the integrity and also encrypt the entire data so it provide the source authentication integrity and confidentiality so esp authenticating the data are added at the end of the packet so esp protocol were designed after the ah protocol was already in use so first we introduce the ah and when we discover the issue in the ah then only we introduce the esp so same example we have we have a data then we have a ah header and then we have a ip this is the external ip which is used by the router by which they are routing the information but in this case data then encrypt the data then we adding the external ip by which the routers can able to communicate so if you go by the security protocol comparison access control offer by both ah and esp message authentication offer by both entity authentication it mean data source offer by both but confidentiality ea doesn't offer it is basically offer by esp replay attack protection offer by both because when we say system a and system b and there is attacker if a sending any data b is asking for the password and he is sending something so he will capture and resend that is not possible in the case of ipsec because every packet has a new unique packet header by which we can able to prevent the replay attack protection so it solution offer by the both ah and esp so today ipsec is also used in a microsoft it is used in a linux in a form of policies how example like we have a, a domain controller and here we have a switch we have a system a we have a system b we have a system c and we have a system d now you want to ensure that a can only communicate with b and you want to ensure c can only communicate with d so from dc we can create ipsec policy and by which we can ensure the a can only communicate b b can only communicate a c can only so this is basically called as a feature called ipsec filtering another important feature which ipsec offer is port security port security what is port security is suppose uh, we have a server here web server so from a domain controller we apply the ipsec policy that they can able to access they can able to access by a port number 80 but if they try to ping on icmp that will be block so ipsec offers this kind of an access control is it clear but primary intro introduction of ipsec was a data security which need to be over send over the network now when we talking about ipsec in ipsec we have a different modes so in ipsec we have a different type of mode the first mode is called as a transport mode ipsec in transport mode does not protect the ip header it only protect the payload coming from a transport layer that is basically called as a transport mode it is also called as a and to and encryption so this mode is used when we need to communicate between host to host example we have a system a and we have a system b okay here we have a firewall here we have a firewall so this mode is basically happening between and to and host so between a and between b this encryption happen so in which they only encrypt the data 
AH and ESP, AH is basically visible. So it only encrypting a data, but IP header is basically visible. You can see we have a data. We have a ESP header, IP header. Okay, so in this case, they basically encrypt the data, but header is basically visible. And that is why it is used between the two host. But between the two firewalls, we basically use a tunnel mode. So it protect the entire packet. It take the IP packet, including the header, and basically apply the IPsec method to encrypt the entire packet. And then they add a new header. So it is basically happening between the two routers. So if you take an example, the same example we have. <clears throat> so this is basically called as a transport mode. And between these two routers, we basically have a tunnel mode. That's why tunnel mode is called as a link encryption, which is happening on the layer two. And transport mode is basically happening from application to transport layer encryption, which, which is also called as a application level encryption or and to and encryption okay so if you can see the packet header size and types so we have a data which is only encrypted rest is basically visible but in this case data is encrypted along with the ip header is also encrypted so definitely tunnel mode is basically offer better security now in which condition we use tunnel mode so company want to create a secure tunnel between its headquarter and remote office, they would use tunnel mode. The government agencies, they want to create a secure tunnel between its headquarter and embassies around the world, they will use tunnel mode. The bank want to create a secure tunnel between headquarters and ATM, they will basically use the tunnel mode. Along with that, we have a case studies where the transport mode is used. Example, user want to securely access the work files from the home, they will use transport mode. The user who want to securely connect to the remote desktop, they will use transfer mode or user want to securely send an email would use the transfer mode. But the question is, what is the key by which they encrypt the data? So we have a third important component in the IPsec, which is called as a IKE, Internet Key Exchange. So it is a protocol designed to create both inbound and outbound security association. So IK is basically the complex protocol, which is based on the other three protocols. One is basically called as a Oakley, one is called as a Skimmy, and one is basically called as ISA KMP. So first is basically called as a Oakley. Oakley is basically called as a key creation protocol. Okay, so you can say we have a stadium, okay, in which we need to play cricket. So Oakley are the players, you can say, okay, who want to play cricket which is used with the ISA KMP. ISA KMP provide the infrastructure, like what is the mode, what is the key, and what is the algorithm we have to use. But when you're talking about SKEME, SKEME basically stand for Secure Key Exchange Mechanism. So it was an alternate of ISA KMP. So today, if you take example, ISA KMP is used for negotiation, it is basically used for establishing a security association and securing the connection between the IPsec peer, okay, which specifying the network for key exchange and authentication. And Oakley basically used for the key agreement or exchange and define the mechanism used over the IKE session for the key exchange. And if you have is a default algorithm they basically use. So IKE is a part of IPsec, okay, a pseudo protocol algorithm which is used to secure the sensitive data transmit across the network. So that is what we have. So Key encryption, what is done, it is basically done through the IKE, which is a combination of ICKMP and Oakley. So Oakley are the players. ICKMP is basically provide the infrastructure. By using the infrastructure about key modes and algorithm, Oakley basically exchange the process. So this is all from my side. Do let me know how do you find this uh, parameter. And one more important thing I want to add here is, when you talk about IKE, it defines the several packets, protocols, parameter, which basically allow the IKE exchange to take place in a standardized format to create a security association. So these are basically the parameters we have that we need to consider. So this is all from my side. And do let me know how do you find this coffee shirt. And do let me know, shall we make more topics, questions on IPsec or other network security topic. And if you really want to test your knowledge, there is also one video I made, which is called IPsec coffee shirt on CSSP. There I basically cover some questions which also give you the better visibility. So if you're new to the channel, do subscribe to the channel and click on the bell icon to make sure you should not miss the future videos on a similar topic. Good day. Bye.